If I was to tell you that you can visit the United States without leaving England, you might think that I'm not quite the full shilling. But it's perfectly true. If you step through this wooden gate deep in the English countryside, you magically enter sovereign American territory, and you don't need a passport or a visa to do so, or to be questioned by immigration officials. Legally, once through the gate, you are on U.S. soil. The reason for this interesting little anomaly is John F. Kennedy. On the 22nd of November 1963, President Kennedy was brutally and publicly slain in Dealey Plaza, Dallas, Texas. With Kennedy died the hopes and dreams of not only many Americans, but of many people all over the world. Kennedy was a much-adored, revered, and respected international statesman who appeared to have been doing much to change America and the world for the better, but was cut down in the prime of his life. Freedom of information is a fundamental human right and the touchstone of all the freedoms to which the United Nations is consecrated. We welcome the view of others. We seek a free flow of information across national boundaries and oceans, across iron curtains and stone walls. We are not afraid to entrust the American people with unpleasant facts, foreign ideas, alien philosophies, and competitive values. For a nation that is afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market is a nation that is afraid of its people. Many people believe that Kennedy's assassination marked a sea change in American politics, and that if he and his brother, Robert F. Kennedy, who was also cruelly assassinated in 1968 when he was running for president, if both had lived, America and the world might today be very different places. Who knows? What we do know is JFK's death caused a massive outpouring of grief and sorrow worldwide, the likes of which haven't been seen since, and also a very strong desire by many countries to honour his memory and his legacy. Britain was of course no exception. In 1965, Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II gifted a symbolic one acre of English woodland to the United States to erect upon it a permanent memorial to Kennedy's memory that would stand forever upon U.S. soil as a beacon of free speech, democracy, and hope. The site chosen for the memorial was incredibly symbolic. Runnymede in the English county of Surrey, just west of London. Runnymede is the place where, in 1215, King John reluctantly agreed to the Magna Carta, or Great Charter, paving the way for the idea that kings should have some limitations placed upon their powers, and also be guided by a council of wise men, the latter eventually morphing over hundreds of years into a parliament, and eventually something called representative democracy. The full name of this agreement from 1215 was Magna Carta Libertatum, or Great Charter of Freedoms, the freedoms of the individual against royal power. In the beginning, these freedoms only applied to the barons who forced the Magna Carta on King John, but over hundreds of years would develop into individual freedoms and rights for all. The Magna Carta is said to have laid the foundations of democracy in the Western world and would go on to heavily influence the American colonists and the formation of the U.S. Constitution. As famous English judge Lord Denning described the Magna Carta, it is, quote, the greatest constitutional document of all times, the foundation of the freedom of the individual against the arbitrary authority of the despot, end quote. Small wonder, then, that the JFK Memorial was placed on land gifted by Britain to America, next to where the Magna Carta was agreed to in 1215. Now, some people are under the misguided notion that the U.S. acre of England at Runnymede is not, in fact, the only U.S. soil in Britain today. What about U.S. air bases, of which there are several today dotted around southern, eastern, and central England? In fact, all of the U.S. bases remain British territory, and in fact belong to the Royal Air Force and are simply loaned to the U.S. for their use, a hang-up from World War II. That's why all U.S. bases in Britain carry the prefix RAF. For example, RAF Mildenhall and RAF Lakenheath, both of these not too far from where I live. The bases come under U.S. military law and rules, but remain part of Britain. 
OK. But what about the US Embassy in London or the US consulates around Britain? They must be US soil, surely? No, not according to both English law and the US Congress. The embassy or consulate is the territory of the host nation, in this case Britain. But the embassy or consulate represents a sovereign state, in this case the United States, and agreed international diplomatic rules mean that no one can enter the embassy or consulate without permission. An attack on an embassy is designated as an attack on the country it represents. So the land beneath the US embassy in London remains part of the UK. The JFK memorial, therefore, at Runnymede is uniquely different from a US diplomatic post or a military base, because the land it stands upon has been gifted in perpetuity to the United States, becoming its sovereign territory. The JFK memorial is approached up a steep path through a woodland, the pathway constructed out of 60,000 granite sets or small cut stones, representing a huge crowd of people. There then follow 50 steps, one for each US state, that curve up the hillside through the trees to the monument itself. The monument is a seven-ton block of Portland stone, a limestone dating from the Jurassic period. This represents the weight of history that permeates the whole acre. Inscribed upon the face is a dedication to President Kennedy and an excerpt from his famous inauguration speech of 1961. nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe, to assure the survival and the success of liberty. In front of the stone, the thick branch of a hawthorn tree extends over the path, forcing visitors to slightly bow down. The designer of the memorial, Sir George Jellicoe, chose the hawthorn to represent Kennedy's Catholicism, and behind the hawthorn stands an American scarlet oak that turns a beautiful colour in the autumn, or the fall, as the Americans call it, the time when the president was assassinated. Beyond the memorial block is a stone path leading to the seats of contemplation, two stone benches that give the seated a view over to where the original Magna Carta was agreed to in 1215. The memorial was unveiled in 1965 by the Queen, the Prime Minister and Jacqueline Kennedy. The memorial and its acre of land, though belonging to the United States, is administered by the Kennedy Memorial Trust, the US Ambassador being one of the trustees and actually maintained by English heritage. It is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and is completely free to visit. So there you are, the only piece of England that belongs to America, a beautiful and simple memorial set in the landscape where modern democracy and freedoms had their beginnings. A memorial to one of the greatest advocates of democracy and freedom in history. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.